Okay. Hello and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to the first CADI webinar. Today we'll be diving deeper into CADI and we'll be focusing on creation, the CADI mission, market, traction, and the future of CADI. CADI is currently raising capital on Start Engine with over $200,000 in raises already to support their mission. My name is Sarah. I do all things content marketing at CADI, and they're some of the most innovative minds I've had the pleasure of working with. That being said, Tyler and Matt, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Ahrens, and I'm CEO, CEO of CADI. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. My name is Tyler Godstein. I'm, I'm the CEO. Um, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I just, I love business. I'm happy you guys joined us. Uh, me and Matt have known each other since high school. Uh, we both got our master's degree at University of Washington. So uh, we're happy to share more about us and about our vision with Caddy and how we're going to make this really successful. Thank you for that introduction. Um, Tyler, how did you ideate Caddy? Yeah. So this all started back in 2016. Um, I was looking for my next venture to start. Um, I, I had, a, had an epiphany. I recognized that the world was in this retail revolution where it was moving from you know, traditional brick and mortar retail um, to e-commerce. So right around that time, um, I was looking to buy some, some new golf clubs. I, I went the traditional route of walking into a golf shop I, I walked around kind of aimlessly. I interacted with salespeople. I hit balls into the net with a simulator. And I felt like, oh, this isn't really realistic. I, I didn't really take anything away from that. I then went to my golf course. I, I asked if they had you know, upcoming demo days, if I could try clubs. And you know, I, re I realized that that was kind of a dead retail space already. And then finally, like most of us do, uh, I went online. I kind of bought that same club at a discount. Um, I spent a lot on I spent a lot on on that driver, and I took it down in the golf course, and I just hit it terribly. I hit it I hit it worse than my old driver, and I thought to myself like, wow, this is that was such a broken experience. That was such a terrible experience. As I did more more research, um, I realized that there's lots of other industries that kind of had the same problem, and that's where it hit me. Um, I, I I took it to my friends, I took it to my my best business friends. I said, here's my idea. I think we can revolutionize the way. Uh, things that cannot be sold online effectively are sold using autonomous retail. And uh, I got really positive, positive response from, from some of my friends and that, that launched us off and that's where it all began. So reiterate for us, what is Caddy's solution? Yeah, so I know a lot of you guys might already know what we're doing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it just, just as a reminder. Um, so from that point on, we, we developed this thesis um, that the world was moving to e-commerce and not all products could be sold effectively online. Um, so we thought there was an opportunity to become you know, the world's greatest, world's biggest modern day sports reading uh, retail store. And we, and we initially were gonna focus on, on golf. And our solution was, was an omni-channel. Um, the omni-channel combined uh, an e-commerce mobile experience with a proprietary autonomous kiosk that, that we, were going to, we were going to invent. And, and the major part that was going to make us, you know, 10x better than every other experience was we were going to put our autonomous kiosks on public golf courses and, and create this amazing experience. And, and what we're able to do by leveraging the golf course is we're able to offer this, this convenient, free, try before you buy experience to, to golfers. We can implement uh, technology such as artificial intelligent fitting if people are fit to the right products. And we can build out this network of kiosks that can eventually be last mile distribution for mobile and online purchases. So in combination with the mobile experience, you know, we can create this, this incredible experience on the course and kind of revolutionize and disrupt the golf industry. So tell us what Caddy's mission is and why it resonated with you. Yeah, so Caddy's mission is to create the best purchase experience for golfers using automation. And, you know, for me, this is something I live and breathe every day. 
Uh, I could probably speak for Tyler too. It's what I wake up thinking about. It's what I go to bed thinking about. It's just this constant energy in me, you know, probably annoyingly so to most of my friends and family. Uh, but I, you know, I really believe in automation as a whole in general from a broader perspective and that ties into everything we're doing at Caddy. Um, you know, so reflecting for me, so that mission, you know, Tyler brought this idea to me. Uh, it just felt like the perfect opportunity. Uh, so at the time when, you know, reflecting to what he was describing earlier and how it all came to be, you know, he brought this to me, I quit my corporate job. Uh, you know, I believe in a vision. I believe in the product we're building. And ultimately I, I believe in Tyler and everything he's capable of. So there are many industries that could use Caddy's solution. Why did you start with golf? Yeah, and this is a common question that we get. So why golf? Well, obviously we're passionate golfers. We love golf, but we're just, we're just normal golfers. I actually played college basketball. Um, the reason why we're focused on golf initially is because I think that's where there's a big opportunity. So golf is that, you know, classic distribution model that is very slow to change. So that goes all the way back to manufacturing where they have to manufacture in big bulk amounts for cost um, distribution, where they they've continued to sell in the same ways like demo days, you know, a couple times a year at, at courses or, you know, traditional brick and mortar stores that we think are declining and will decline, continue, you know, into the future. And then online, which is now the emergence. So, but, but there, there is this, this kind of broken retail experience, as I mentioned. Um, another reason why I think this is really powerful is there's this, there's the, the power of the golf course and the golf course used to be a place where you buy clubs. Well, you know, with all the, the emergence of big box and now the internet it's kind of hurt the golf course and we think that we can you know implement our technology and really you know empower the golf course to be successful you mentioned that automation can transform the golf course can you expand on that yes yeah, so this is another question we get a lot it's like why would a pro shop want you guys to be a part of their you know their business and i touched on it a second ago but you know, in the early 2000s, that was kind of the introduction of the, the golf shop and then the big box niche retail golf shop. And that really hurt the industry. Um, at, at, at about that point, the, the golf manufacturers, the OEMs, Taylor Mays and Callaways, they kind of didn't make it easy by offering them price discounts or, or quantity discounts. They, they were offering it to the big box retailer. So slowly over time, the golf course has decided like, hey, it's not worth it for us to hold inventory, train our salespeople, focus on sales, which is focus on rounds and range balls. So 99% of public courses have kind of got away from, from equipment. So that, that, that also makes this ineffic inefficient, inefficient retail store. So we actually are the perfect partner. We can come in and, and offer all of our, our, uh, our technology where we're very efficient. You know, that's you know, pricing and logistics and holding inventory and use technology to not replace, but enhance the, the purchase experience. We also can partner with, with the pro and, and, and be a place where pros can communicate to potential clients at the course. So we made, in our model, we made it really easy for us to partner with the golf courses because we want to have thousands of golf courses. So, so uh, you know, to answer that question, we think we're the perfect partner for golf courses and pro shops. So why is now the right time for Caddy and autonomous retail? Yeah. So I mentioned in 2016, I saw this re uh, retail revolution, as I call it. Um, but, but traditional retail was still successful. So it, it was, internet was it's been growing every year, but it didn't come until 2020 when, you know, the pandemic hit and forced a lot of these stores to close to really change everyone's mind and go, oh, wow, if, if we don't have a digital presence or we don't have a different solution, my traditional brick and mortar store was not gonna survive. So I think that just opened everyone's eyes up to our concept and, and, and uh, this new retail channel that we're creating. Um, also, one of the only things that you were able to do was start golfing. So, so golf just, just has this, this boom. Um, you know, The data that's coming out this month is that there's a 14% increase even with the shutdown for a couple months in rounds in 2020. That's massive, that's massive. So I think this is the perfect time for us. 
For one, people are accepting our technology. This is becoming more common. Also, golf is just so popular. There's this whole new generation, basically my generation that is getting into golf and loves golf. And uh, I think the timing is perfect. Thank you. Matt, what were your 2020 revenues and what was your growth year over year? Well, building on what Tyler was saying is we, you know, we rode that successful wave that golf saw in 2020. You know, so we closed right around 800,000 in sales, you know, partly due to our shift in focusing more on this crowdfunding. Uh, so we scaled down a bit in Q4, but we were still up, you know, 125% from the prior year. And as we think about where does this go in the next year, and, and we think we could, you know, two to three X sales, and we're confident with that number. And what is the strategy for scaling and how will you roll out kiosks in each region? Yeah, yeah I, so I could think that. Uh, let me start uh, with that and I'll pass it okay. to Tyler. You know, so we have this regionalized scaling strategy uh, focused on targeted markets and partnerships, which Tyler's aggressively uh, working on and I'll let him speak to that. Uh, yeah, and I, I was just looking at Patrick's question, so I wanna, I wanna answer it here for him. Um, so there's really two ways that we think we scale. There's multiple ways, but based on the kiosk strategy is we're gonna focus regionally on you know, the top golf regions to start. So that happens to be more in the su southern, southern half of the United States where the weather is better. But we know that golf is there's passionate golfers up in, in the Chicago Midwest area, as well as the Northeast. So we're gonna focus and roll out by region. Um, we're, we're based here in Southern California where the weather is always good with uh, 365 golf. So we probably focus to this side of, of, of the country. But as soon as we're able to kind of build out that logistics, um, you know, we're going to learn and all of that, that first market. And we're going to be able to scale quickly um, into other markets. I mean, we, so we have the benefit of having uh, as an advisor and a partner, uh, the former um, you know, VP of technology for Redbox and his main job was scaling Redbox. And he was there from the beginning when they launched, you know, their first 250 kiosks. So we're going to follow that model. I think one thing that we have that is different than Redbox or any other, any of our uh, you know, inspirations is uh, we have this, this large golf management network. So companies like Troon, which manage 700 courses now and American golf, which is a hundred that we could sign them up. Um, negotiate that deal, and then launch hundreds at a time. So that's, that's a, we have a very clear strategy. The other part of this is that this is also this, this e-commerce side of this. So we're, we're currently building out this kind of e-commerce technology where we now can offer this to more parts of the country than just the regions where we have kiosks. And we can learn the engagement we get from those markets and we can choose like which markets have the, the most engagement where it would be a great place to go to service the customers that we already have in that market. So um, I think that's really our strategy for getting this out as fast as we can. Thank you. And jumping into the experience, how does the on-course kiosk work? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, so this is always evolving. We're always improving this. You know, we're, we're introducing this more mobile and increasing the ability to fit people to the right clubs autonomously. But, you know, in 2019, we were on the course most of the year testing our technology, our prototype kiosks. And that was really successful. So initially, this is how it worked for us. And I'll, I'll throw in kind of how this we expect this to work with the mobile app. So you were able to, to either reserve clubs on your phone or engage the touchscreen on our kiosks. Um, our touchscreen is a catalog. Uh, we initially launched with drivers and putters, but during that time we tested with woods, wedges, um, accessories. We even had a couple of days where we were, we were doing full sets. Um, but our core market was the drivers and putters, which is the most purchased you know, segment of, of the golf equipment industry. Um, so you, you choose your club, so you want to try the new tailor-made um, sim. You can either use our fitting system or you can choose your own. So if you use our fitting system, we're gonna, you're gonna answer a series of questions and we're gonna recommend certain clubs for you to compare and try on during, during your, your, your demo experience. Uh, and you choose your club, 
multiple clubs. You then choose your duration. So we, we started at, at six hours, you know, to make it, to not have any hurdle, we charge $10 for six hours. You know, that might go up or might go down depending on how, how you know, as we, as we grow and change what's most important to the customer. Um, so you get it for six hours. In that six hours, you get, you know, you get to unlock the entire kiosk. So you can come exchange it as many times as you want. Um, it, we did up to two days. So it was scaled based on time. And you can just keep coming, exchanging it and trying it and, and, and demoing it until you see some improved performance. That's the big part is that you have the freedom to play rounds with it, take it somewhere else, hit it on the range, play with your friends, compare with your old driver and actually realize and see for your own eyes if it's better than your, your current driver or it's better than, than the Callaway. I think that's one thing that is, is forgotten is that it's very rare that you can try a Sim versus a Maverick or Sim 2 versus an Ep the new Epic um, in, in real life situation not someone watching over, over your back. And then here comes, I mean, here's where our IP is, is that now you, you create an account or you swipe your credit card and it creates an account for you. And every club we have is tracked with sensors and scanners and it attaches those clubs to your account and it's protected by, you know, we're protected by the credit cards. Um, you take it out, you have that experience where we push notify you uh, the purchase price. We want you to keep the club that is best for you. We want you to buy the club. We, we offer two options. We offer the dynamic pricing on the demo club. So what we mean by that is the price goes down based on usage, or you can come back and exchange it for a new club that we have in the kiosk or have it shipped to your house a new one. And that's more map, map pricing as they call it. Um, so yeah, so as you come, you either return it. If you don't want, if you don't want to purchase it, you just return it and it's just going to charge you that $10 or whatever that fee is for your demo. Or if you want to buy it, it's going to charge you that, that full amount. Um, so, and, and I think that's just the, the, we wanted to build the foundation. There's, there's ways to make this, have much more products, have different types of products, have different types of demo experiences, make this more personalized, building out more technology, how we're collecting uh, golfers data. So, you know, that, that's kind of how the experience works. And what is your model moving forward and how do you make money? Yeah, yeah, so this is another common, common uh, question that we get. And, you know, initially we were making all of our money through the margin of club sales and the, and the, demo, the demo experience for customers. Um, as I mentioned early on, our vision is to really build, build out this, this ecosystem that we can leverage the golf course and offer different types of deals to our membership. We can uh, offer discounts on clubs and build out this, this kind of Amazon-like model, which is part subscription, part marketplace, margins slash fees. And I mean, there's other ways we also can make money with advertising and product placement, but our, our core business is gonna be building out a value system so that golfers will want to pay subscription. And, and I think this is something that we didn't quite mention in our page that well, because it gets deep into the roots, but we think that we could leverage the golf course and offer this experience and these, these deals and this kind of rounds and build our network where that people will, will want to buy from us, will want to be a part of our, of our community and our experience will be better than every other you know, retailer in golf. And what is a big vision for what Caddy can be? Yeah, so I, I have you know, extended some of these questions to answer that. But initially, we think we can create this new, new retail channel that, that wins golf. Golf is very fragmented. We think we can win now in e-commerce. We can win, we can win you know, traditional brick and mortar by powering the golf course. Um, we then think that this, this experience to buy a product is the same exact experience it would be for tennis, for baseball, for skiing, for biking, for, for surfing. A lot of these sports have already seen the demise of traditional retail and now you can only buy baseball bats online for the most part or hockey sticks so we think we will then you know say so we i mean it's it's cliche to use amazon but we can win golf and then we can open up different sports with a similar experience and they have you know they have like baseball has these huge baseball fields that are not are not have no retail at all or tennis facilities or ski mountains or you know parks and you know that's where we're going and that that's that's what our, our big vision is what are your exit goals? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'll take that one too, Matt. Um, we, we, we think this is going to be like an avalanche. So as soon as we start getting traction in golf, we're gonna, we're gonna, lots of, lots of players will be like, hey, we need to acquire them. You know, I mentioned Amazon, but other, other, other parts of golf industry, whether it's the OEM, golf management companies, and we would consider those type of deals. But really, we have this bigger vision, this five-year vision, where we can win golf win a couple more industries and then our company would be extremely valuable and be an exit target, be an acquisition target for several different players. So let's talk about crowdfunding. Why did you choose to go the crowdfunding route? I could take this one. Uh, it, crowdfunding is amazing. It's, you know, the way it's evolved is impressive. You know, start engine, I think is, leading in, in many ways but really all of these platforms are doing something that's completely new and innovative uh, from an equity side and you know for caddy we wanted to give everyone opportunity to invest in our company so really democratizing investing you know we thought it was a great way to really introduce our product to a, a mass audience uh, not only to get investors but customers and really start to build this core, you know, caddy community, as we call it, uh, you know, avid golfers, people that love to talk the game. Uh, golfers are a unique demographic and, and we love to engage with them. So this allowed us to share everything we're doing, you know, all the things Tyler's talking about, you know, where we want to go, what we think we can do uh, and start engaging that community, uh, get feedback from them, I think is also really valuable. We're seeing a lot of that now um, on different platforms we're engaging with. Um, and it would, you know, force us to become, you know, quote unquote experts, so to speak, in this, you know, world of digital advertising and uh, branding and so forth. So that has been a valuable learning along the way. Uh, I think ultimately we're very confident, you know, coming into this, we, we always had this bigger vision, uh, but we brought it down to, you know, crowdfunding is an amazing platform. It's a great place for us. And, we, you know, we're competitive. We had a lot of confidence in the target and the goal. And you know, I think we've progressed you know, in some ways exceeded some of our mini milestones and it's, you know, it's getting lots of traction. We've, we've seen lots of excitement. It's been very encouraging. Yeah, let me, let me add a couple of things to that as well. Um, we could have raised money in, in several different ways. You know, we, we've raised a, our, our initial seed round, you know, with, with angels and family and friends. Um, but I think what crowdfunding offers is that you get, you know, up to 2,000 customers that are vested in the success of our retail channel, golfers most likely, that's, that's big. Um, we really wanna be experts in digital marketing. And so, you know, going the crowdfunding route requires you to become experts in different technical fields, which is, which is huge. So those are two reasons why we, we really believe in, in this crowdfunding platform. Can you tell us Caddy's use of funds strategy from the campaign? I can start with that. I think it's from a high level, there's probably, you know, three buckets. Uh, the first one is really focusing on, you know, merging the connectivity of our e-commerce and our kiosk network. Um, so that's accelerating our development with the funds that we're receiving. Um, optimizing that infrastructure. And, you know, along with that is building the team. You know, so we're actively looking and hiring, you know, key resources, talented people that can come in and help us scale. Um, and then ultimately, once we get to that position is, you know, relaunch, deploy our kiosk to a target market, going back to, you know, how we scale. Um, that is, you know, quickly the next focus. Mm -hmm. And tell us about your management team. Why will your team win? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll take this one. So uh, um, I think it's easy for companies just to put names on a piece of paper. Uh, for us, one of the first things we did is we reached out looking for expert advisors and, and you know, help to understand these industries. And that was our smartest decision we made. So, you know, the, one of the first people we brought on was uh, Dave Felker and David Felker was one of the founding executives of Callaway Golf Ball, and he just understood the golf industry from a manufacturing, from a 
IP perspective. Uh, he had relationships with, you know, current executives, and he's worked with us very closely, even almost even in a full time rate over the last four years. And, and he's played a huge part, more than just a name on a paper. Um, second person we brought on uh, was was Carol McCluskey, and Carol McCluskey has an amazing background. Uh, with Redbox and Outerwall, which owns Redbox and several other companies. And she was, she was a classic active advisor. But what made her so valuable is she connected us to so many different people. So we were connected to, you know, the product people at Redbox. We were connected to the operation people at EcoATM. We were connected to all these powerful people, including um, one of the first, you know, the first most important people at Redbox, which was Franz, who we went on to partner with who helped design and manufacture our kiosks. So we, we, we saved a lot of pain points. If this, this is an easy technology because it, in, you know, it involves mechanical electric, electric software engineers. Um, they, they are the, the world's experts in the space. So you know, with, with Matt and I's knowledge in golf and now all aspects of this business and you know, their guidance from success. Uh, I think this is, that gives us, you know, kind of a moat around us as a competitive advantage, but, but also we're going to save time and money along the way. So that's a really big part of our success. Well, I would, I would add to, I, I know we're probably running short on time, but you know, just from like a co-founder side, like uh, personally, like you hear a lot like disruption or conflict among co-founders, but you know, yeah, we banter back and forth jokingly, but like Tyler said, we've known each other for a long time, but there is this unique synergy that you hope to get in partners. And I, I feel that with us, you know, we mesh pretty well. So there's just a lot of ebb and flow that I think is super important and very valuable when you're, you're working on, uh, you know, intense problems and building solutions. And so I'm let me, uh... Let me ask, let me answer these questions here mm -hmm. before we went out of time. And I've answered a couple of them, but yeah. So Patrick, uh, right now we're planning on not doing a franchise model. And that's because we want to control this experience and make sure that, that it's up to our standards. Um, I answered the one about, I hope I answered the, the one with the pro shop. You know, we do, we, you know, in our initial model is we revenue shared with the golf course. And we essentially rent the space. That's exactly what happened. Um, the golf course is, is, was happy with basically anything we would pay them. And they were really happy with the experience that their, their customer base gets. So really, the, they don't have a lot of leverage in this negotiation. But we offer, we made it really easy for the golf course to have our technology. Because I said, we want to have thousands of golf courses. And we want to choose from the best ones, which, which is kind of, I see a pro, I see a question down here about that. Um, Dickie Walsh, that's a good question. So we work with the OEMs. We also work with other manufacturers to get, you know, kind of close end year end product as well. So, so we built out different type of ways to get merchandise for our kiosks. We have a lot of people reaching out to us now, especially because we have a unique way to sell product. Um, and, and people like that. How do we protect the brand? You know, that's really important. That's, that's one reason why we don't want to franchise. But we really come in and we take over our process. We've created this process and are very protective of our brand. Um, we use data to choose our courses. You know, we partner with the, the NGF and, and they have really powerful, strong data on every city in America. So that, that's, uh, clearly a very important part of our scaling is choosing the right courses and we kind of we have a uh, an idea more than an idea we know which courses are very successful and it mostly comes with the social class around the golf courses it is it, it doesn't necessarily matter the the rate um, because we have we've had a lot of success at courses that cost thirty dollars as we have at courses that cost $150. Um, so so we, we put a lot of stock and thought into the courses that we, we partner with. 
And obviously we have a, we put a lot of resources into the courses that, we are, that we're installing our technology with. And so, you know, in 2019, we worked with TaylorMade, Callaway, Titleist, Cleveland. We had uh, different rangefinder companies. We had training equipment like Orange Whip. Um, and, and most of it was either new line product or one year old. So we were focused on one year old and new, year, new line product. But, you know, we've done, we've done work with Tour Edge. So we want to be able to offer all the product that uh, a customer would want. Currently, currently we're, we're only offering single sets, but this should have been a question. Um, so the question I'm gonna propose myself is, um, how does the kiosk, how is the, how is the kiosk built? So the kiosk is built very modularly. So there's a brain segment of it, and then there's, there's different modules that we could attach. So the, the, the locker-like system we attach to it now holds single clubs. You know, we've, we've started down the process of, of building a module, module that can sell anything like golf balls with a different style of tracking the product. Um, we mentioned that like we've been in discussions with Top Golf and other entertainment like venues. We're gonna build a, an attachment that could hold full sets because that's that would fit more of that model. So we intentionally built this that we can improve this without having to rebuild the whole thing. We can just build one part that is more functional than the other. So we plan on on really offering full sets, offering a whole bunch more technology through this kiosk, like accepting trade-ins, um, buy online, pick up in store. All of this stuff is really important to us. And that's what we're working on now. And, and, and we needed to be able to build different modules to our kiosk, and that's what we're going to do. So is, is that all the questions that everybody has? I know we've kind of went over a little bit, but I'll give you guys another 10 seconds to ask a question. <laughs> um, yeah, I just take take the chance to thank everyone. Appreciate you guys coming. We're excited about the things we're doing. We hope you are too. You know, we're available. We encourage you to visit our Start Engine page, but also connect with us. Uh, I see another another message coming in here. Will there be a recording of this meeting? Yes. So we'll put this up. You guys will have access to this uh, anytime you want to look at it. Uh, you know, we're on LinkedIn. We're on socials. Uh, we'll, we can share our, our emails as well. Yeah, so I'll answer the last question and I'll, I'll uh, wrap this up. But so Start Engine has some fees. I think there's three and a half percent fee for the investor for investing in, in our company. We pay we pay three and a half percent fee on our end too. So that's the fee for using their platform. Um, overall, that they, they offer a lot in you know following all. This is a very highly highly regulated offering. So they they take the responsibility of making sure that we're doing everything correctly and that, you know, every company on there is, is following all the regulation. Um, another, yeah. So I just wanted to take the time to thank everyone. If you invested, I really appreciate the support. Um, if you haven't invested, we'd love to have you a part of this journey. Uh, we, we think this is going to be massive in, and, and uh, we're, we're, we're already down this path. So you can invest at startengine.com slash caddy. Uh, one thing that we take pride in is that we're always available. So if you reach out to us on our on our social media, on our email, so our my email is Tyler at caddykiosk.com and Matt is Matt at uh, caddykiosk.com. We'll always get back to you. Uh, we're happy to to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, and um, we're always going to communicate well with our investors. That's that's something we take pride in. So again, thank you very much for for your uh, your time and your questions. And I hope, uh, I hope we did a good job of answering them and showing some of our personality. Thanks, everyone.